Assalamualaikum and hi everyone. My name is Siti Sarah Azman and in this video I am going to show you how to calculate the number of ATP in cellular respiration process. Okay. From previous video, okay, you have covered um, the reactions happens in cellular respiration. Okay. So our cellular respiration starts from one glucose molecule okay, which will undergo glycolysis reaction followed by link reactions or pyruvate oxidation and then we have Krebs cycles and finished by oxidative phosphorylation which involves electron transport chain and chemiosmosis. Okay. The previous videos have explained in details the steps happens in each of the reactions so I'm not going to focus on that. Okay, so what I'm going to focus in these videos are more on uh, steps that are important in our ATP calculations. Okay, so when we want to calculate the number of ATPs, there are certain steps that you have to focus on. Okay, so the first one, you have to focus on the steps where ATP molecule is being used. Okay, and if there is any steps where ATP is being produced, okay, so you have to focus on that as well. And last one, you have to focus on the steps where NADH or FADH2 molecule are being produced. Okay, so these two molecules are important because NADH and FADH2 will be used in oxidative phosphorylation to produce ATP molecules. Okay, so that's why it is important too. Okay, so let's focus on calculating the number of ATP produced in glycolysis first. Okay, so we have investment phase in glycolysis, okay, which starts from one molecule of glucose. Okay. In the first step of glycolysis, we have phosphorylation, okay, where ATP molecule is being used, okay, where one phosphate group from ATP will be transferred to glucose to produce glucose 6-phosphate. Okay. So this is the step where ATP is being used. Okay. And then in step number 3, the same process happened, okay, where, phosphorylation of, uh, where we have phosphorylation. Okay, so we have one phosphate group from ATP being transferred to fructose 6-phosphate to produce one molecule of fructose 1,6-bisphosphate. Okay, at the end of investment phase, we have fructose 1,6-bisphosphate being split into uh, one molecule of glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate and one molecule of dihydroxy acetone phosphate. Okay, from investment phase, we know that two ATPs are being used. So we need to remember that and then we are going to go to the payoff phase. Okay. So in payoff phase, we have step number 6 where redox reaction happen. Glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate will be oxidized into 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate and we have one molecule of NAD plus being reduced into one molecule of NADH. So this is one step where NADH is being produced. Followed by step number 7, we also have phosphorylation where one phosphate group from 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate will be transferred to ADP. Okay, since ADP receives additional phosphate, so it becomes ATP. Okay, so this is the step where ATP is being produced. And then another step that you have to focus when we want to calculate the number of ATP is the last step of glycolysis. Okay. So in the last step of glycolysis, phosphorylation happens okay, where one phosphate group from phosphoenolpyruvate will be added to ADP molecule to produce one ATP molecule. Okay. So from this payoff phase, okay, from one molecule of glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate, you will get one molecule of NADH and you will get two molecule of ATP. But you have to remember, we have this dihydroxyacetone phosphate waiting to be converted into glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate. So 
we have this dihydroxy acid and phosphate which will undergo isomerization okay and will be converted into glycerol dihydrophosphate so now we have the second glycerol dihydrophosphate okay the same process happened where uh, they are being re um, where the glycerol dihydrophosphate being oxidized nad plus being reduced into nadh and then we have one molecule of atp being produced in step number seven and in the last step, we will have another molecule of ATP being produced. Okay, so we have in total two glycerol dehyde 3 phosphate. If you add it from the previous slides, okay, we will get two molecules of NADH being produced and four molecules of ATPs. Okay, but you have to remember during our investment phase, we do borrow two ATP molecules. Okay, since we borrow two ATP molecules during investment phase, we have to minus two ATP. Okay, we borrow, so now we have to pay them back. Okay, and the results. Okay, we have two molecules of NADH and two molecules of ATPs being produced in glycolysis. Okay, so you have to remember this one comes from one glucose molecule. Okay, another thing that I want to highlight, since we have two molecules of glycerol dehyde 3 phosphate, okay, so the product will be two of these products. Okay, and we will have two molecules of pyruvate. Okay, so this is important for the next reaction, which is the pyruvate oxidation. After we calculate the number of ATP produced in glycolysis, okay, so the product of glycolysis will undergo pyruvate oxidation, or we call it as link reactions. Okay, so remember, from glycolysis, we have two molecules of pyruvate. Okay, so that is something that you really have to remember. Okay, so there will be a multi-step reactions, okay, where two molecules of pyruvate will be converted into two molecules of acetyl CoA. Okay, so we do have redox reactions where pyruvate will be oxidized into acetyl CoA, and then since we have oxidation, we also have a reduction reaction. Okay, so the reduction process happens in when two molecules of NAD plus will be reduced into two molecules of NADH. So in link reaction, the product that is important for our ATP calculation is this two NADH. Okay, so we have two NADH from link reaction. Okay, there is no uh, ATP being generated in this uh, in this step. Okay, so I hope everybody is clear with that. After link reaction, we have the Krebs cycle reaction. Okay. So Krebs cycle starts when the product of link reaction, which is acetate-CoA, will be added to oxaloacetate to produce citrate molecule. Okay. So you still, you have to remember from previous reactions, the product will be 2-acetate-CoA. When we have 2-acetate-CoA, we need 2 molecule of oxaloacetate to produce 2 molecule of citrate. Okay, so the same number ha applies to the product in Krebs cycle. Okay, two citrate will produce two isocitrate followed by two molecules of alpha ketoglutarate, and then we have two succinyl CoA, two succinate fumarate, and two malate molecules. Okay, so when we want to calculate the number of ATP, the steps that are important. We have step number three, number four, number five, number six, and also number eight. Okay. In step number three, we have redox reactions. Isocitrate molecule will be oxidized into alpha ketoglutarate, okay, and we will have reductions of NAD plus into NADH. Since we use two isocitrates, so we will need two molecules of NAD plus to be reduced into two molecules of NADH. The same reaction 
happens in step number four. Here we also have redox, where alpha ketoglutarate will be oxidized into succinyl CoA, and we will have two molecules of NAD plus being reduced into two molecules of NADH. In step number five, this is the only step in Krebs cycles where ATP is being produced. Okay, so succinyl CoA will become succinate. Okay, so uh, with a series of steps, we will produce two molecules of ATP. Okay, and then followed by step number six, another redox happen. Okay, succinate will be oxidized into fumarate. Okay, and in this situ uh, in this case. Instead of using NAD+, the electron carrier is FAD molecule. Okay, succinate is oxidized into fumarate and FAD will be reduced into FADH2 molecule. Okay, and then another step that is important for our ATP calculation is step number 8. In step number 8, another redox reaction happened. Two molecules of malate will be oxidized into two molecules of oxaloacetate, while two NAD plus will be reduced into two molecules of NADH. In total, okay, the number of ATP and NADH and FADH2 produced, we have two molecules of ATP, six NADH, and two FADH2 being produced from two molecules of acetic OA. I hope you understand how do we get the number of ATP, NADH and FADH2 being produced in glycolysis, pyruvate oxidation and also Krebs cycles. Okay? In the next part of the, uh, of the video, uh, we are going to combine these numbers together and we are going to total up okay, so that we can get the number of ATP from uh, one molecule of glucose during cellular respiration. Okay, thank you.